Hi, Spring fans. You know it's hard? Integration is hard. Building a microservice in a vacuum, not so difficult. But writing code to integrate that microservice with other microservices to safely move data or conduct data across the network and, and, and back, that's difficult. There are a lot of patterns for control flow with which I, know, I have no doubt that we're all accustomed to having written code on the JVM. These patterns aren't necessarily natural in the context of work orchestration across services, however. Things get difficult as we connect more and more services to the system. These things become uh, more of a surface area, a larger surface area that needs to be integrated with every other part of the surface. And obviously, integration by its very nature sometimes involves integrating things that were not written with integration in mind. They didn't anticipate a particular scenario for integration. And so that can sometimes make these things hostile to integration. There's double work here. There's the work of actually moving data from one thing to another, of adapting that data. And then there's the work of the control flow, of the orchestration of that data. So integration between services and systems and movement of data in well-understood patterns. Most of which are, by the way, cataloged expertly in Gregor Hoppe and Bobby Wolf's seminal tome, Enterprise Integration Patterns. Spring integration is a framework that builds on top of Spring and it reifies these architectural patterns so that we can think in terms of the patterns, we can think of, of, of events in the system and of messages being conducted from one part of the system to another. This Spring integration also provides a, a slew of adapters, things that allow us to adapt data from one service to another. This allows us to think in terms of our big, big picture system and not in terms of the low level orchestration code and reliability patterns uh, that we'll need to have, but that should already be provided for us. In this installment, we're not gonna hope to review all of Spring Integration. First of all, because we've already attempted that in one of our very first Spring Tips videos looking at Spring Integration way back in 2016. But second of all, uh, because I just wanna cover a few new features in Spring Integration 5.5. We're gonna look specifically at the new zip file adapter and we're gonna look at this new support for Spring Native. As always, I hope you get something out of it and we'll talk to you next time. All right, let's go ahead and build a new, new demo that uses Spring Integration and the new stuff in Spring Integration 5.5. We're gonna go, as usual, to my second favorite place on the internet, start.spring.io. I'm gonna call this integration because it's gonna be a, a short and sweet demo consisting of but one module. We use Spring Integration, we're gonna use Lombok, uh, and we're gonna use Spring Native, and that's it, okay? We're gonna hit go, and we're gonna open this up, as always, in our ID of choice, whatever that is for you, it doesn't all that much matter, so long as it supports Maven or Gradle and uh, the version of Java that you're using. All right, our code's open. Let's go ahead and start working on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just demonstrate a simple uh, you know, file inbound flow, okay? Now, we, again, we couldn't hope to cover all the features in Spring Integration 5.5. So I'm gonna just look at two things, right? Spring Integration Zip and the new support for native images, okay? So the goal here, and, and the reason I care about this is because I've actually got a thing where I need to read from a zip file. So this is actually really useful. I had no idea that they were gonna add this to Spring Integration. It solves a, it scratches an itch for me because it's a thing, right? It's like whenever you see uh, data in a zip file, you wanna be able to enumerate that. And that works perfectly where, you know, for aggregation purposes, right? So often you see a flow where some client uploads a tarball or a zip file or whatever to a file server or some sort of you know, directory of some sort, right? Like remote NFS or Samba or uh, or FTP server, SFTP or whatever, right? Or local file system. Um, <clears throat> and they use the tarball as a boundary, as a, like a, a container in which to package manifests and the individual files. So we can use that, uh, use that mechanism now, you know, much more easily because there's built-in support for reading from that, that uh, zip file and then emitting each file that's discovered in that uh, zip file as a new entry, a new file to then be processed by some downstream thing. And again, you could just be using the inbound file adapter to read, uh, to, to perceive events related to the file system, funnel those to the uh, support for uh, enumerating the contents of a zip file, the D, uh, you know, the unzipping um, transformer, and then, you know, process each file in whatever you, way you want. Perhaps the thing you want to do is to send that message onto a batch job, right? This is one of those things where, as often as not, people forget, you know, that the internet runs on batch jobs, right? There's just so much of the modern world that is based on the organization's ability to take data, 
aggregate it in some you know way, uh, determine a sort of a window, a, a time box for that data, and then chunk it into a chuck it into a, a, a zip file, and then send it off for processing in a batch, right? So it's, imagine using a, a job launching message handler, which kicks off a Spring Batch job in response to these file messages, right? It's just the the possibilities really are endless. I mean, there's just some really interesting opportunities here. So. So we're gonna start off our flow just like we do any flow. We're gonna create a bean of type app integration flow. Uh, we're gonna create a uh, bean using the integration flows handler, okay? And we're going to inject some data, okay? So I want some files. I wanna create two directories, right? Uh, User.home desktop in file in, and here's the other one, file out, all right? Good. So we're gonna read from an inbound adapter, but we don't have that inbound adapter, so we need to actually add that to our, uh, our build. Let's go to palm.xml, and I'm gonna just add spring integration file and the uh, spring integration zip support, okay? There's this. Now, Spring Integration File is actually part of the core Spring Integration Framework, uh, and so we don't have to manage the version because that version is transitively managed by the Bill of Materials manifest uh, for Spring Integration. That said, the Spring Integration Zip support is actually part of the Spring Integration uh, extensions, and that's actually a separate repository, each module of which has its own cadence, its own life cycle. So here I'm gonna specify Spring Integration Zip and use the newly minted 2.0 version. All right, so now we've got these in the class path. Let's go ahead and make sure that they get reloaded. And now we can create the inbound file adapter, okay? Files dot, uh, inbound adapter. So we're gonna read from in, auto create the directory true, okay? Good. And given a message, we're gonna create a polar to, you know, given a, a directory, we're gonna pull that directory uh, let's say every one second. And once we have the data, we need to do something with it. I'm gonna pass it to something. So here, I'm assuming that every folder, every file that shows up in that inbound directory is actually, in point of fact, um, a zip file, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna, you know, I wanna unpack, I wanna take one single uh, zip file and split it into its component files, the, the files inside the, the archive. So I'm gonna do a uh, transform, okay? So a transform, and the transform I'm gonna use is a uh, unzip transformer, right? Unzip transformer, okay? And you know, it's not hard to configure, just define it thusly and inject that in kind. Okay. And then once that's done, it's going to, um, you know, it'll give me a bunch of files. It'll tell me what the files are. It'll give me a, an aggregate that contains all the files. And I then want to split it, right, into, I want each file to create a new message flow, basically. So as opposed to a continuing flow. So actually, that's a that's a good point. What is what do we get here, right? New. Let's just leave it as is. Before we do the split, let's uh, analyze what we get. So new message, okay. Message dot get payload dot to string et voila. And then we're gonna say message dot get headers dot for each kv system out kv. All right, so that's that's just a simple flow. It's just to prove, to show us what we get when we use the unzip tra transformer. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now in order to see this in action, we need to actually have a zip file. So I'm gonna go to the command line and I'll create a new directory called test in which I'll just uh, touch one, two, you know, echo one to one, Echo two to two, uh, and now I've got a bunch of files with some content in it, right? Not a, a lot of files, but I do, okay? So now I'm gonna zip up that directory, minus R, uh, and then it's called test, 
and we want to call this uh, test.zip. And that gives us .zip, right? 4K, not a particularly impressive zip file, but it does give us the ability to see whether this is working or not. So let's uh, delete that, unzip that, and there we are. So that's, that's a valid zip file. Let's go ahead and now move that uh, to our inbound directory. So test.zip to my desktop in folder. And we return to the code, and you can see that Spring Integration has promptly uh, noticed the file. Here's a new message, test, blah, blah, blah. And you can see it's, it's actually an array, it looks like, right? We've got um, array of the constituent files, so test one, uh, and then test two equals, so it's like a map, actually, it looks like a map of keys and values, where the key is the name of the, um, uh, the, the the entry relative to the root of the zip file, so test one, and then the uh, the value is the fully qualified path of the uh, since unzipped uh, element, okay? And so we got one, if we, if we enumerate the headers, you can see that as far as spring integration is concerned, we got one message which has a payload, which, looks, which is a map. Well, I wanna split that into its constituent pieces. I want, you know, each one of these files, so let's say in this case, should go to its own flow, right? So instead of using handle, what I want to do is I want to uh, split it, and I'm going to split it using uh, the spring integration unzip result splitter. Okay, and, and voila, there's our unzip result splitter. And we'll say unzip result splitter and then we'll, uh, well, now we'll have multiple flows. So here, let's put another handle message, you know, new message handler. Uh, I suppose I should have just retained the old one, but whatever, it wasn't all that hard to write. So system out and message.headers.foreach, kv, system out, kv, all right? So let's run this one more time. So now we should get uh, two messages, two distinct messages. Uh, because we're getting two different files inside the zip. Okay, there we are. So there's uh, payload one, right, which is the path to the second file. And here's payload two, which is the path to the first file. I suppose that did that backwards, but you get it, right? You can even see the un unzip transformer unpacking the zip entries. Uh, so now we've got two different events. Right, so the splitter is, is doing its job. What I want to do now, finally, is um, write the data. Right? I want to write it. I want to write each file for whatever reason. And again, you could do all sorts of things. You could use an aggregator here instead. Like imagine you've got a bunch of artifacts that need to be aggregated into one zip file. Uh, you could actually, you know, use a spring integration aggregator to then ensure that they all end up in an aggregated message, and then you could send that into this. Um, this uh, writing, the zip transformer, this, uh, this thing that does the opposite of the unzip transformer. Uh, and you could then write multiple files. But in this case, you know, all I wanna do is um, write each file to its own zip file, okay? So let's look at how that would work. New zip transformer. And I will inject this zip transformer here. Like so, and we'll say, um, after we've split it, we want to transform it by writing it, zip transformer. Alrighty. And we don't really need this, do we? Now the, the, the thing that, you know, is worth considering is we, we want to, once it's been transformed into a zip file, we want to write it out. So it'll, it'll have created a file that has the contents of the input file. So the, the output of this is more, you know, zero to n messages, each of which has a payload of file. And each one of those messages is gonna be sent into this transformer. So it's like a scatter gather kind of thing. And this transformer is gonna take each file and then zip it and store it somewhere temporary. And it's gonna be, I, I guess, pres I presume, it'll be destroyed at the end of the flow. But we wanna actually put it somewhere proper. We wanna actually put it in our outbound directory. That's this thing up here. So what we're gonna do is use a file outbound adapter, right? And we'll use the handle files outbound adapter out auto create directory is true. And this will be, uh, you know, the question then is what should we name the files? Well, 
Remember, we've got the name of the incoming file. Let's use that to inform the outgoing file. So new file name generator. All right. And given the message, we can actually unpack the message, get the constituent bits, get file headers, file name, dot zip. So I'm just taking the existing file uh, and I'm turning it into a, uh, into a string, right? So, oops, uh, wrong key, I'll extract that. There we go, there we go. So there's my, my string file name. Uh, Okay, there we go. We've got our string file name. We've got our outbound directory. Let's go ahead and run this flow one more time. We've also got an out directory, which is up here. So let's go to the out directory. And there you can see one.zip, which is in turn just one, right? It's that one text file. And then two.zip which is again, just the contents of two, right? So it worked. We were, we were able to take data to uh, unpack it, unzip it basically, process each constituent file uh, separately, concurrently. You could actually configure third pools or even more crazily, you could actually, you know, for each file, you could have sent a message to Spring Batch to do some processing and then send a reply with the result status or the status code of the Spring Batch job. And then that could be, you know, put into a zip file and then sent into an outbound uh, volume. Maybe it's a FTP server or something. But we're not done. There's one more thing we need, we need to do. I want to turn this into a native image. And this is actually really cool. This, this didn't work a few months ago, but uh, the Spring Integration team has done a lot of work to get this to work. There are some places where it could be even better and that's to be expected. One thing I noticed is that we have to have uh, a, a, a specific hint for generic message, and I, I sent a pull request, so hopefully you won't even need to do this, but in this case, I needed it. But other than that, um, this should just work. So we'll go to the command line, maven minus d skip tests minus p native clean package. All right, it's finished. <clears throat> and in no time at all, really. So now we can run it. Let's go to the target directory and run the integration program. Now, before that happens, I'm gonna stop this one because I don't want the Java version, the JVM version of the application interfering with the be behavior of what we're seeing uh, in the native one. So I'll delete these two directories and then we'll go back to the terminal and just run it, right? Okay, so that's worked, it's up and running. Here are our new directories. Let's take the, uh, test a zip file here and drop this in the in directory and then see if our program works. Ah, there it is, look at that. So if we go to the out directory, we can already see two items have appeared in the out directory and just as before it's worked. So that was native code, mind you, that started up in 49 milliseconds uh, that takes almost no space at all that you know is imminently containerizable. In fact, you can use the Spring Boot build packs integration uh, to prove that, right, to see it actually do its thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, it takes no RAM, very, virtually no RAM at, at, at runtime either. So here's the actual uh, binary, 51 megabytes. That's the, that has everything. It's super fast, it has the runtime, it has the code, it has that all you need to process files and zip files in, with a plome. This is super cool. I hope you got something out of this. As usual, I'm uh, Josh Long. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.